All right, guys, here's the next Josh of All Trades video. It's been a long weekend. It seems like every time I think that I'm running out of projects, things start breaking to do more videos. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it seems like I'm constantly doing projects. So anyway, the rear brake started dragging and squealing and grinding really bad on the minivan this week, so I'm just going to do a quick video on do-it-yourself, replacing the rotors and the pads. So um, what you're going to need, you're going to need your jack. Here's the, here's the pads I bought, here's the anti-squeak quiet, and then here's the drum, or the, the discs, and there's all my tools I got out. So the what, first thing you want to do is take off the tire, and so that is the jack that came with the vehicle, and usually I recommend using that if you don't have like a huge floor jack, and the reason be being is that was designed for this vehicle. So. What I'll end up doing is right here, this little plate, that's where you put the jack and it lifts it up. That's meant to where you like um, replace the spare tire. You put your spare tire on so the vehicle is meant to lift there. So what we'll do is we'll take and lift it up and take the lug nuts off and we'll remove the wheel and then we'll dive into this. So now that we got the tire off, got the emergency brake off, so it spins freely. You can hear it kind of grinding as it goes around. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to take the disc off and we'll need to take the caliper off so we can get the disc off obviously and then we get the pads out. And so in order to do that, take this bolt and there's a bolt directly below it off and that'll allow the caliper to slide off with the pads. And then you want to take that little set screw and that little set screw off and then this will pop off. You might have to pound this with a hammer or a mallet to just kind of break that little rust that's on there and it'll, it'll slide right off the studs. So. so I took those two bolts out and the caliper slid off and here's your pads that we'll end up taking out and as you can see they're they're pretty pretty shot. That one's actually, I can't believe it didn't start squealing sooner. And then you take, I'll take those two set screws out that I was telling you about and here they are. The problem is, is I, I did forget to tell you I've done brakes enough that I forgot. These are really, really, really soft screws and so I suggest you use something that has an impact to it that has like a vibration as you're unscrewing because I totally spaced it. Put my regular drill on this one as you can see if she zooms in here it's stripped out really bad and then what I had to do is I ended up having to drill a hole through it, squirt uh, like anti-seize in there and then I had to really work on that one to get one out and then I used my impact on the other one and it just zipped right out. So I'll have to go in and get some new screws. What I suggest though if you're a forgetter like me is uh, the last time I did brakes on the car, I went out and I put stainless in there and because the stainless don't strip out near as easy. They, they cost a couple bucks a screw, but it's uh, easier next time so you don't forget. So you take those set screws out, you pound on it with a hammer. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, so you keep banging on it. I did forget to tell you, you got to take this little plug out. It's kind of like, I think it's one of those vibrating rubber things that helps the vibrations and you just keep banging. Just keep banging, 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 and there you go. There's your pat, or there's your old existing. What I didn't uh, forget to tell you is try to keep all your cleaners and stuff out of the inside of that because it's going to get on the parking brake. So that is that, fellas, guys. And so now some chicks. Some chicks. Apparently, that's my following chicks here. Chicks do this too. <laughs> well, I, you never know, right? <laughs> So like here, let's get a quick shot here of the pad. And as you can see the thickness, here's your squealer that makes you start squealing. See how thick they are? I mean, there's nothing left of that pad. I mean, right there, that's what's left of it. Wow. So, and then you can see. So basically you just slip these as in. As soon as you start squealing, you need to have it replaced. Yeah, then. so you just slip these in, in the groove here, into these clips here, you just slip it in. Press the piston back on the caliper, and what I would suggest is some vehicles the rear caliper is a screw out instead of a push out. So you'll need to know which one. This one is just a push out. So I'll be able to use a clamp and push the piston back in. But what you need to do is make sure you go up under the hood at your reservoir and you open the lid and maybe take a little bit out because as you start pushing this piston back, it's going to push all that fluid back in up there and it's going to overflow uh, in your reservoir. And then when you're done, since you didn't change the caliper, you technically don't need to bleed the brakes. But today, I am going to bleed the brakes because I want to get a lot of that older fluid out of there and put newer fluid in there because it's going to not need brakes for quite some time. So, so I got the pads out. 
I got my clamp out because like I said this is a compression one it doesn't screw out so I just put my C clamp in there and I push the piston back in so it gives you all this all this extra room here now to get your new pads in there before you want to put your pads in you want to put some of this disc brake quiet stuff on make sure you mix it up really well this is this is a you get it at your parts store with your other parts and it's just like four or five bucks but you want to put people only say a little bit but I don't care I like to go a lot because I hate having to take your brakes back apart and put this stuff back on there so put a ton on there and then take your finger and just kind of smooth it all around and before you what I like to do is I like to it'll set up kind of a little bit get a little bit thicker so it's kind of runny right now so I'll let this sit for a few minutes and kind of get tacky before I put put it in there because you don't want it to all run out once it comes out So just let that sit for a few minutes. Make sure you get everything in here cleaned out. Get all that, like if you used a, a WD-40 or a, a screw loosener. I can't think of this. I'm trying to remember the name of it. But anyway, whatever you use on here to spray to get your bolts to come off easier, make sure you clean all that up. And then you put it put it all back together. So we got the, the anti-squeal stuff on there. See it? It's set up. So I s slipped the pads in. And so those are ready to go. Slipped the new disc in, ran to the store real quick while we were on the off take there, and I got some stainless steel ones. They're uh, these were like a buck eighty a piece, so we'll just throw these in. And on the next set at the brake, well, this is the rear brake, so we probably won't have to change these for six, seven years the way they don't wear out very fast. But the front ones, when you put the stainless in like this, I just put them down like hand tight, just like that. But they will come off so much easier next time because they're not soft like that. Put your vibration little doohickey in there. And so now, you just slip this on just like that. Line up your bolts back here. We'll screw these on. And then what we'll do is, here's your little bleeder valve. We'll pull this little doohickey off, your little rubber. There it is right there. Then to bleed your brakes, so you're gonna need two people. So that's why I got my lovely assistant today. She's all in her little sunny, hot get up. But what we'll do is, so you need someone to sit in the front, and then you open this valve, and you pump the brake pedal three or four times, and it'll squirt liquid out, and then you tighten it up, and you do that three or four times. That's usually how you get the air out of the system, but I'm doing it just to get the fluid out so I can put new fluid in. So that is pretty much it. We'll tighten these up, and then it's just putting the tire back on and uh, torquing it down. What we'll do is I'll just tighten them up probably as snug as I can get them with my wrench and then do like a quarter turn past snug. And then Les Schwab is just like half a mile away. We'll take it in Les Schwab and let them torque it up to the proper proper spec. We're basically done other than putting a tire on. So um, I tightened everything up. I took this little cap off and you can see the little the little bleeder for when you bleed the brakes. You just unscrew it about half a turn, three quarters of a turn, then I had Christine sit on the inside and pump the brakes probably about a dozen times and then I would, or actually probably five or six times and I'd go fill the reservoir up underneath the hood and then she'd pump it five or six more times. We kept doing that until I, I flushed the uh, reservoir up underneath the hood out to get all the old fluid out and I put new fluid in. And so I'll do the same thing on the other side to get it all nice fresh fluid. Um, make sure that you only use what the dealer calls for. I bought Honda Dot 3 brake fluid. And so um, now that everything got everything all done, I got uh, some brake parts cleaner and don't spray it in here because you wash all that off, but like the drum here because I had my greasy fingerprints and stuff in there. So I, I kind of got all that cleaned off on a rag. And so we're good to go. So everything's back together here. The only thing there is to do now is put the tire on, put the lug nuts on, and then just lower the car back down. I do have to say that once you get brakes on like this, uh, the first, say, 100 miles or 200 miles, depends on how much you do braking or whatever, they might um, stink, they might smoke a little bit, like the last set I put on the car, like, if you're real hard on them, like in town driving, and I got out at home one day, I was like, hmm, what's that smell, and I looked down, and the, and the pads had a little bit of smoke coming off, that's normal to do that. It, it's normal to do it for like a couple hundred miles, if it's like 5,000 miles and you're still smoking, then there's something wrong there. So, basically that's it guys, hopefully this helped you out, make you to, uh, uh, do a how-to if you guys can do it. Uh, quick breakdown here is the uh, pads. Pads were 
hold on here, I'll be able to tell you. I went to CarQuest, so let me see. So the pads were twenty-three dollars. The drums or the discs were forty-seven a piece, and then the anti-quiet was only looks like a buck sixty-five. Which that doesn't sound right. I thought it was five bucks, but anyway, I'll take it. Buck sixty-five for that, and so it was twenty-three dollars for these and forty-seven dollars for those, and then these were two bucks a pop. And so the brake cleaner I already had and whatnot. So basically, your total is about a hundred and twenty-five bucks, and that's to do um, your brakes on the rear of the minivan. I already had the Dot Three brake fluid, and I'll show you what that is. It's just a Honda Genuine Dot 3 brake fluid. That's about, uh, probably about three, four bucks a bottle. And I bought three bottles because I wanted to rinse the reservoir and flush the system out and get some new brake fluid. It's just good. Any new, any fluid in your vehicle over time, it breaks down. It loses all of its additives and stuff like that. And it's just always good to flush all your fluids no matter what fluid it is. Except for maybe your wiper fluid. But anyway. So anyway, guys, I'm going to throw the tire back on, call it a day, and then the other side is just kind of like the reverse. It's the exact same thing, but it's on the other side. So hopefully you guys are able to do this on your own. Okay, so we're wrapping up here. I've got the other side done. It went super smooth. Took like 10 minutes to do. Just want to kind of give you guys an idea. So here's your brake fluid. I think I already showed you that. But here's the reservoir right there. And there's a minimum and then there's a maximum. You want to fill it up. So you want to fill it up to the correct level. And I would recommend that you get in and you start the vehicle and you pump the brakes that way it sets the new it sets the new pads into the seats really well and plus it pushes the piston out a little bit and then you want to go check the reservoir and fill the reservoir up accordingly because you don't want to get any bubbles or anything in there and so like I said so wrapping up here I just wanted to make sure so this is my old fluid here that I took out of my drip pan that I used and so I was able to dump it in here make sure when you guys have fluids like that you dispose of them in the proper fashion you want to take them to like there's a local mechanic shop that has a sign out in this big old like stand that he takes all kinds of recycled fluids and stuff so you can recycle them properly. You don't want to just go throw them in a hole in the backyard and forget about them. So with that everything. With that being said, we're going to go give the van a test drive and we're going to call it a day. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe and we'll catch you on the next project.